Welcome back to Inside City Hall. A building at the Brooklyn Navy Yard is home to one of the most exciting new educational complexes in the city. It's called the Brooklyn STEAM Center, and high school students from around the borough go there to study subjects including construction, engineering, film and media, computer science, and the culinary arts. Last week, I joined school's chancellor, Richard Carranza, for a tour of the school. We were also joined by the principal and later on the president of the Navy Yard. We started out in the culinary arts section. Here's part one of our tour. Hi, I'm Errol. Hey, Very nice to meet you. Tell Come me your in. name. Chef Shelley. Chef Shelley. All right. Are you a full-time teacher? Yes. Okay. Wow. Along with Chef Peggy. So we have two periods. We have a junior and a senior class. Oh, okay. Think about foundational. So okay. foundational knife skills, safety and sanitation, cooking methods, just to get their feet wet. And a lot of them come in with skills from cooking at home. Uh -huh. so what we do here, we just make it a lot more robust and we give them the language to associate what they're already doing. Got it. Yeah. And have you have you worked in the restaurant business? Yes, for years. For uh -huh. over six years. So I've done catering, I've worked in restaurants. So the way we do the dynamic here at Steam, you're always gonna have an industry teacher that's their special, they worked in the industry, then you have a pedagogical teacher that's like a veteran, they can rock out in the classroom. So it's like that great balance and that's what I think CT is all about. So, so Chef, tell us what we're going to do. So we went on a community food walk. So we are super fortunate to take a trip to Myrtle where we had the opportunity to try various cuisines and pay homage to New York's melting pot. Yeah. So we'll be fusing today a little Jamaican with some Mexican. Um, on the helm of a lot of things happening with street vendors, we decided to just give them a shout out and make churros today. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's a carrot infused churro. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. this. So you're going to take it, right? Okay. And then you're going to put it in here. Ah. Uh huh. All right. Let's see if I can make this happen. Do you cook at home? <laughs> I, uh, I kind of cook a little bit. Okay. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, you look like a pro there. Wow, this looks good. So what is this? Okay, so here we have carrot juice, different Caribbean islands such as China, Jamaica, Guyana. A lot of them use um, carrot juice. First, we juice the carrots. Okay. Ground cinnamon, ground nutmeg, and ground ginger in the mix. And then we also put some oh. condensed milk in it to give it a little sweetness. It looks great. What, what do you like best about culinary arts? What draws your attention to it? Well, growing up, my grandmother taught me how to cook, and I just feel like learning new things about, you know, how to handle a knife properly and how to make different kinds of stuff from different cuisines. I just feel like that's it. So you get to be creative? Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Can we try them? Yes. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Awesome. Wow. It's awesome. Thanks Everybody, for... let's say bye. Thank you. So for the last two years that our program has been open, we have had 100% of our scholars earn their New York City Department of Health Food Handlers license. 100% of our students also pass a national assessment for culinary arts. Mm. And with high enough scores that they've all received college credit waiver letters wow. uh, to 43 affiliated universities. Huh. Uh, so we have one scholar who's an example of that. He's over at New York City College of Technology and he's waived from 12 credits in their culinary arts and hospitality management major. It's amazing. So they walk out with not only a diploma, but they walk out with industry skills. Industry skills. Industry certification. Absolutely. And job opportunities. Yes, sir. Immediately. Immediately. That is amazing. That wow. is amazing. And prior to this center being here, how would a student, what would they have to go through to get a comparable level of skill and certification? So New York City for many, for many years have historically operated career and technical education high schools, uh, formerly vocational high schools. I was a, mm -hmm. a graduate of a vocational high school as a student with special needs. Back then I was tracked into that setting, um, but it's been a life changer for me. And I've seen the power of that, and, which is why we are so passionate about um, Steve and CTE education for our young people. You know, one of the things I really appreciate is that you, you talked about how powerful that was for you, but here you are, you're the principal. Yes. So you're not tracked, CTE isn't a track anymore, it's a, it's a pathway. Tell it me is, a little bit about it's, that. It's a pathway to prosperity. Yeah. <laughs> Our scholars are scaling recipes and they're figuring out why math is relevant to culinary arts mm -hmm. and why literacy is important to you know, building out and crafting their recipes. Um, in construction, they're practicing geometry. Geometry is coming to life. 
Okay, so what are we doing now? So in this room, our scholars right now are working on a podcast. Oh. Uh, Errol, I know you have okay, a podcast. Okay, there you go. New episode today. <laughs> yes, you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Right now, we just was talking about our EQ process because after they finished doing their recording for the podcast, they will actually mix their own podcast within Pro Tools. So you guys can explain what your podcast is about. It discusses the generational gap between old hip hop and new hip hop because the old generation doesn't really appreciate the new music because they feel it doesn't represent the culture of hip hop. And the point of our podcast is to find ways in which we can bring the two together. Coming to the booth, sure. we can ask you a few questions on hip hop. You bet. Um, are you a fan of hip-hop? Yes, I am. Oh, that, that is great to hear. That is great to hear. You know, music always evolves. It always becomes a point in time. So it's influenced by everything that happens in, in the world. It, it's influenced by society. It's influenced by the politics. So as music evolves, uh, there are different ways of listening and, and appreciating the music. And I think, you know, uh, as a musician, I always want to have an open mind. I look at just the broad sweep of it. I remember when it started out as just a novelty. And then it becomes a multi-billion dollar industry. And then, and I know your podcast talks about this, it fragments a little bit. The same questions y'all are dealing with now. You know, in 1986, 1987, people were saying, hey, whatever happened to hip hop? Even the question itself <laughs> is not that new. You know, <laughs> this generation, next generation, any generation, they're just telling their truth however they see it. It's good that you're looking into it, and it's the best way, I think, to understand and enjoy the music. Absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you. Um, I appreciate you coming on to our podcast on our episode of Bridging the Cat. Have a nice day. All thank right. you. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break here, then we'll be right back with more from the Brooklyn Steam Center and Chancellor Carranza. Stay with us.